Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the force on a current carrying wire practical, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to calculate the magnetic flux density of a permanent magnet via experimental methods. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we can understand how the magnetic flux density can be measured via experimental methods. We can plan an investigation to measure the magnetic flux density and do this via an experimental means. And finally, we can make observations to measure the magnetic flux density of a permanent magnet, which is one of the required practicals in the AQA A-level physics specification. Investigate how the force on a wire varies with flux density, current, and length of wire using a top pan balance. So in your investigation today, you're going to measure the magnetic flux density of a permanent magnet via experimental methods using the equation F equals BIL. So you would need the following apparatus. You'll need a current carrying conductor inside a permanent magnet on a balance. You'll need a switch to control where the current flows through the conductor. You'll need a variable resistor to alter the and control the current flow. You'll need a power pack to provide the circuit with an EMF and you'll need an ammeter to measure the current flow through the conductor. You'll place the conducting wire in a permanent magnetic field, placing the wire and the permanent magnet on a balance. Now the permanent magnet is created by placing bar magnets on an electric shell. So as a result, the magnets on either side of this chassis must be attracting each other, and the wire is connected in an electrical circuit using circuit wires in crocodile clips. Now we've placed the wire inside a glass rod so that it can be clamped, because we don't want it to move outside of the magnetic field, because if there was a force being produced on this wire, it will cause it to accelerate in a particular direction, and it would accelerate it outside of the field. We do not want that, so we clamp it in position. Now the wire is not touching the balance. The only object touching the balance and therefore being measured by the balance is the permanent magnet. Now what will happen is we will zero the balance before use and then when we turn on the current so it is going through the wire this will give either a positive or negative value on the balance. Now it's important to know this idea that it, we zero it so before use when there's no current going through the wire it's reading zero grams. However when you put the current through the, the wire, it will cause either a negative or positive value to be read by the balance. Now, whether it's positive or ne negative, is determined by the direction of the magnetic force on the wire and the magnet. Now, using the left-hand rule, try to ensure the value reading on the balance is a positive one. You will then have an ammeter placed in series in the electrical circuit, which is going to be used to measure the current in the investigation. Now, we assume the ammeter has a zero resistance. Now, a rheostat is placed in series in the electrical circuit. The rheostat is used to vary the current in the electrical circuit. And remember, a rheostat is a variable resistor which has three Three connectors. Now, place a power supply into the circuit which will produce a current when the wire is switched on. So, the power supply should be set to 7.5 volts, which limits the current to a low value. Now, the current should never go above 6 amps or the device and the wire could overheat and be dangerous to use. Now a switch is used to turn on the electrical circuit and place a current through the wire when a reading is taken. Now this is going to prevent the current going through the wire for a long period of time and heating up the wire, making it dangerous to touch. Now the electrical circuit is turned on when a measurement is needed to be taken. And this will give us a value for the mass on the balance and current on the ammeter. So you'll record the values of current and mass. Remember to record the values of current on the ammeter and then to record the values for mass found on the balance. Then use a rheostat, alter the values of current and record the values of mass for different values of current. Now you've got to decide the range and intervals of current values you wish to measure. Now you've got to be able to justify the range of values you choose and the interval of values you choose. You then must decide the number of current values you wish to measure. Once again, you have to justify the number of values used. Then repeats should be taken. This can be done by turning the circuit on and off by the switch, not by altering the variable resistor. Once again, you decide how many repeats need to be taken. You'll also need to measure the length of the conductor for the investigation. Now this value must be the length of the conductor in the magnetic field, so therefore this is the length of the permanent magnet. So here is a schematic diagrams of the apparatus used. So we've got our permanent magnet produced with our magnet or magnets attracting each other on this metal cradle and a thick copper wire clamped at each end in 
between the two but the magnet or magnets is then placed on the electronic balance and as you can see in this particular diagram as shown here now once you've got your values for force and your values for current you can plot the following graph now to clarify you'll need to convert the mass in grams into a force in newtons now if you don't take the balance uh, if you don't zero the balance before a reading is taken then you get a zero error in the data because the line wouldn't go through the origin so as a result we know f equals b i l so b equals f over i l and we can tell from our gradient gradient is change in y over change in x so it's f over i so it's force over current so therefore we can tell that the b the magnetic flux density is equal to the gradient of the line divided by the length of the wire and from that graph you can determine the magnetic flux density of a permanent magnet via experimental methods so what should we be able to do from today's lesson we should understand that the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field is equal to f equals b i l where the field is perpendicular to the current. We should be able to use Fleming's left-hand rule to ensure that the reading on the balance will give a positive value. We should understand what the magnetic flux density and the definition of the Tesla are, and we can investigate how the force on a wire varies with flux density, current, and length of a wire using a top pan balance. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should understand how the magnetic flux density can be measured by experimental methods, plan an investigation to measure the magnetic flux density via experimental experimental methods and finally make observations to measure the magnetic flux density of a permanent magnet. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson which is the force on the current carrying wire practical which is in the magnetic fields topic of AQA A level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.